Hello, everybody. Hello. One time, may I have a question? Please, uh, yes. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I'm usually following the breath in the in the sitting, and uh, after certain uh, uh, certain time, let's say in the deeper deeper stage of the meditation, uh, the breath uh, become quite uh, miserable. There is a uh, uh, there are obvious uh, like feelings or observation of uh, suffering in it. Uh, the most obvious is uh, uh, like feeling of uh, suffocation, and I can I can uh, I can see uh, the fear of uh, to be suffocated and. As I overcome that fear, uh, then uh, then I move to even deeper state of uh, meditation. Uh, and there are there are almost no thoughts. The only thoughts that uh, used to arise here are uh regarding the object because uh uh as i try to uh to observe the breath again it's like a uh, repetition of the process it means that i again uh, again see uh the the qualities of the breath i would say the painful quality of it and then I again come to the to the peaceful state, and when I try, um, it's also possible to observe some some another uh, feeling. Last time it was uh, like heaviness of uh, uh, of the maybe body, uh, simple simple heaviness, and uh, I choose the I choose the breath. And when I try to to observe the uh, the awareness of it, like to to move the the focus on myself, on the awareness itself, uh, it's like seeing nothing. And after a while, uh, again start the thoughts of uh, what should I. What should I observe? You know, so it's like uh, it's like a dilemma. Should I follow the breath all the time? Maybe going uh, uh, even deeper, or should I try to observe uh, the mind, the awareness itself? This is what I'm. I'm not sure what to do because uh, this is the only source of uh, of thought. During uh, during the sitting, so that uh, that my question: What should I, what should I observe? So that <clears throat> if I got your statement that you can understand the breath, you can understand the painful breath that is uh, suffocation like, and then it is going to the peaceful level of uh, breath, and no breath. So uh, so your four levels of breathing. Now your understanding is which one you must focus: gross breath, painful breath, peaceful breath, and no breath. But uh, one thing that I wanted to stress is even without breath or even without uh, an object, the mindfulness can sustain. Mindfulness can be mindfulness can be with the breath as well as without the breath. Instead, there may be some other objects also besides the breath. But whatever may be, you must be mastering, or you must be, you must go prepared. Have mindfulness without an object. It is like a, when the plane is aeroplane is starting to uh, gain the 
momentum in, at the beginning of the runway ultimately it go off runway without uh, without uh, ground so likewise we have never experience the knowledge beyond our senses knowledge beyond our sense impingements so when such a thing happen we become questionable we become doubtful we become unstable but luckily you have seen it again and again uh, so do the same thing again and see the mindfulness is sustainable mindfulness is uh, perse- perseverance even without the breath even without an object so that mindfulness is not belongs to you that mindfulness mm-hmm. is beyond your senses so that is a different perspective for your life no senses mm-hmm. no impingements but the mindfulness become the base it become the datum line from that you can look at the life you get the body you get the breath and you can see uh, with or without the body without with with or without the breath the mindfulness can sustain it is as if you have dead you are dead and you are looking at your body mm-hmm. that is why mm-hmm. the fear Mm-hmm. So you okay. have to go prepared. Don't don't I'm, I'm see, I... don't ask uh, where to base what is to be uh, pivoted what is to be taken as the benchmark. You have to teach your body. Uh, sorry, you have to teach your knowledge, teach your consciousness, teach your mindfulness. Even without an object, the consciousness can be there. the mindfulness can be there soon you accept that part which is appear like mystic not scientific that is the spiritual part of the life so you have to make to conclude i will say you have to make that no object kind of mindfulness must be your at home feeling whenever you are with an object you are misled your mind is amused it is with uh, it is it uh, drifted situation it is with the uh, the uh, dop situation no mind is absorbed but without an object you are totally living and uh, not uh, no misunderstanding when nothing else can uh, lead to no misunderstanding things can lead to misunderstanding sensuous pressure can lead to misunderstanding sensuous impingement can lead to misunderstanding but besides Uh, object and the uh, besides uh, senses the mind can be there and that must be your at home your second nature you are qualified to do it try will you understand uh, yeah yeah exactly because i was uh, the doubt uh, the source of the doubt was uh, that there has to be some object to be observed and when i try to observe uh, like uh, nothingness it was uh, i start to again the those those arise because uh, it was like uh, like losing everything <laughs> difficult to explain but uh, i i uh, i felt that it's okay but uh, uh there were some some strange doubt if uh, this is the this is the right path to follow um but now i i know so uh, okay so uh uh i should only try to be more familiar with the process of of observing nothing yeah should not did i understand yeah then that when that happens you are also not there yourself also not there judgmental mind is not there rational mind is not there it's a kind of cruising situation it's a mm. kind of a floating situation you can't claim that i that me that myself with nothingness nothingness means you are completely dead you are gone but still there is an ex- experience that is what you call spiritual it is not mystical it is a, it's a very under the nose experience Mm-hmm, scientists mm-hmm. scientists yeah, yeah. can't think about that 
that foolish fellows people are always based upon their knowledge on the senses and the sense impingements they are montessori level <coughs> okay okay mm-hmm. thank you very much thanks a lot welcome <laughs> okay the the yesterday session we had a very uh, bad connection so there was this question about the uh, recording so i have put it in the chat um uh, i've seen that uh, Pantus friends have already uploaded it and the recordings are in a super quality because that goes without the zoom it's it's a direct recording from Pantus computer so the answers from yesterday questions are recorded there and Tamara and uh, also Claudia could uh, listen to them if they like good so maybe some more questions from somebody oh um Claudia is writing that her neighbors are making big noise I think we can manage with some background noise. If we can understand you, or, or you can write it down there. Yeah. But if we okay. can understand well, yes. you. Please, hello, hello. At least we can try whether you hear, because they are drilling something on the roof, so it's a very t- unpleasant noise. Can you hear it, or is it okay? Uh, no, right no or- problem. No problem. Okay, so maybe at the beginning I would like to ask one theoretical question, Bhante. Yesterday when you were, uh, there was a question about the Vitaka in the Vichara, but um, maybe I would like to understand better the difference between uh, Manasikara and Vitaka, if possible. And then also in the Dhamma talks you uh, refer to the Sutta, and there is the difference between the Vitaka and the Sanya. And yesterday, if I understood properly, Properly. You mentioned that uh, like Vitaka is the direct contact with the object and Sanya is like the shadow. But my previous understanding would be rather opposite, that the perception is the direct contact and the like Vitaka would be like the mental process. So I'm now a little bit confused about this uh, terminology. So thank you yeah. for any explanation. So I will try my best. And uh, in this particular sutta, uh, sutta, the Dukkha Sutta, it says Kama Vitakka and below Kama Sanya. Vyapada Vitakka, Vyapada Sanya. Avinsa Vitakka, Avinsa Sanya. So you first see, you met up with the gross one, Vitakka. Kama Vitakka, Vyapada Vitakka, Vihinsa Vitakka. Once that is tackled, still you have rudiments and sediments like Kama Sanya. So likewise, the Vitaka and Sanya, uh, Vitaka somewhat you can manipulate, Vitaka somewhat you can restrain. And once that is done, uh, you can understand still there is a, uh, the uh, precipitation. There are some uh, shadows as Sanya. So that is what I made yesterday. So do experiment and see. And the next question is Vitaka and Manasikara. So I would like to add the third party, Vitaka, Manasikara and Chetana or will. So all these three are something you can steer your stream of consciousness. Vitaka, you can advert your mind to the particular object accordingly your lifestyle your liking and disliking your path can be slowly slowly changing manasikara also the same it is called noting that your vitakas are this uh, this direction that direction like <coughs> and chetana or the will is the commanding power it is commanding vitakka to do this for me do this for me like that it is uh, uh, working behind the screen. So power oxide uh, draw an draw uh, an example. <clears throat> Imagine a rowing boat in a competition. There are maybe twelve rowing people and one person at the <clears throat> helm and the one captain. The captain is in the front of the boat and the 
the person at the helm or the row uh, ladder not the ladder it's called rudder at the behind <coughs> in between the rowing people so rowing people incessantly rowing 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 row 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 the boat you know the song and then the manasikara person do, uh, doing the manipulation of the rudder is leading the boat against the current wind current or whatever may be to the object uh, or the winning post and the captain in front of that taken care about everything so likewise in a given situation three things three variables are working if you are mindful you can understand the uh, rowers or rowing people the vitakka people can give the <coughs> push forward push and the rudder is leading the uh, deciding the lead of the boat and the will the volition is in front it is commanding is a captain everyone has to listen so likewise all the three available if you are mindful otherwise you don't know your captain is <coughs> working for your well being your rudder your steering person is working for your well being or you are the rowers uh, peddling they don't know what they are doing there is no such a, uh, there is no such agenda they are doing their own way so whenever you are mindful you find all the three are mad so you have to restrain them and focus them to a neutral thing something like breath but otherwise vitakka will never select the breath as the target it has some <coughs> kama vitakka vyapada vitakka vihinsa vitakka never come to the neutral so the buddha come and buddha says hey darling if you let them run by their own bewilderment bewilderment monkey mind they will hell they will play hell they have just fixed the target of the neutral object so very difficult vitakka not listening but you have to keep on practicing 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 how many thought moment how many breath cycles how many minutes you can keep the uh, roving 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 and the rudder has to decide accordingly it has to decide accordingly wind current and the rovers and then uh, it is no it knows the where the target is so likewise then it can maneuver the boat and then you can understand the role of the uh, captain the will and uh, the at the show for now he mentioned as far as the the captain is there he is always misleading you is always leading to kama vitakka vyapada vitakka vihinsa vitakka so what you do is by practicing 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 you make use the vitakka and uh, throw him away let it happen automatically wherever you go to just to look at the breath and uh, the manasikara also have some aims but you are misleading manasikara distorting manasikara as to whether it's a gross breath medium breath liking or disliking or no breath wherever may be please continue whereby decision is not necessary decision is necessary as far as the self is there decision making is necessary as far as you have a sensuous pleasure as far as you have a worldly objectives yes at the beginning of your meditative life you have them at least to have a economical life at least to have a above average social status above have some political power you must have vitakka manasikara and uh, chetana but as you continue uh, towards a good thing and the momentum gathers things are happening out of the na- law of the nature rather than your <coughs> conscious decision so that part very difficult to understand from the rational mind so that is why we have to sacrifice our 
the adamantation, our self, our decision making as we continue, as we progress. So, <clears throat> Vitakka Vichara, one way of explaining, Vitakka Manasikara and Chetana is one way of explaining. So, we are learning and we take our mind as an example, but there is no something called my mind. Everyone's mind is the same. So, once you master your mind, you know everything about the humankind. So, therefore, there is no something called Claudia's mind. The day the Claudia understands, Claudia will not claim this as my mind. Claudia will not claim as that my background music, uh, background noises, drilling the sounds. They are sounds. Nothing to worry. Understand? Yes, Bante, thank you very much. It explained a lot also from my own experience. Wonderful, thank you. So, so let, it, them, let them make yes. more noise behind, no problem. <laughs> okay, I was just uh, af- afraid that maybe it will be difficult to understand. I'm not really disturbed very much by it, but for the quality of the sound, I was worried. Nothing to worry, nothing to worry. So, but if the. Okay. So, if there is no other question, then I would like to report again um, my my practice. So, um, um, uh, in some meditation, sitting meditation, the uh, everything was very, very calm and peaceful, and it was um, very transparent, very faint. All the sensations and the perception of the sounds or even some seeing like when the eyes are not closed completely it's very tender it's not disturbing the mind at all now it's just uh, like the mind is just being aware of it but it's not interfering with with it at all so um and the mindfulness uh and it's sometimes it's observing like it's 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 like all the different layers are behind each other so sometimes uh, the mind is aware of everything at the same time but uh, then it's and it's really not the conscious decision or re- refocusing but it, but sometimes when something maybe starts to attract more attention or starts to be not so smooth maybe then it's focused or it's zoomed into this layer. Let's say sometimes it's more like uh, stronger bodily sensations or sometimes it's the thinking. So only this layer will pop up and it's like more obvious and all the other layers are at the background. But still the mindfulness is not interfering at all. There is no wanting or not wanting it. It's just watching that, aha, now this is like uh, prominent or very dominant. And then after a while, it just uh, falls into the background or, uh, I mean, all the layers are again on the same level. So, and it's a very peaceful experience. And um, I understood also in connection with uh, what you told me, that also the quality of the mindfulness is changing, that I was used that still there is this kind of uh, a little bit of judgment, like, okay, now I'm mindful or now I'm not mindful. But this is not happening, well, not all the time, but in these very peaceful meditations. It's really just a very soft, transparent and tender kind of uh, mind- mindfulness or awareness of everything that is going on. When that uh, such a thing happened, Claudia is not there. As far as the cloudy eyes there, yes, yes. mindfulness Actually become not. very gross. Mindfulness become manipulable. Mindfulness become under my control like. But the day it becomes soft, the day it becomes transparent, you are no more. But you are the direct experiencer. Yes, yes, and, something uh, like yes. You can talk with others, you can share with others, but again you drop back to the rational cloudy eye. And again, go to the exactly. irrational Claudia. So that is our game. That is the way we we play in this rational world and the irrational world, conventional world and the absolute world. It's completely nature, and sometimes you are manipulating the nature. So that is the way we transcend each other. So don't think 
the soft part is better than the gross part soft part become soft because of the grossness gross part become gross because of the softness so they are interdependent they are they are relative they are trans they are dependent origination so you now see the phenomena when the cloud eye is there the grossness is there rational mind is there judgmental mind is there slowly ra- cloud eye disappears then the boundaries disappears everything happened very smoothly that is why it says as far the will is there you are evil Yes, yes, very, very precisely you said, said it, yes, exactly. And uh, then I just want to report that uh, what happens also from time to time, there are some very short memories of the past, like when I was a child or whatever, but very unimportant, some situations that I might not even remember normally. But when they happened, actually they were very neutral or sometimes even pleasant. But now when the memory comes, there is a slight uh, uncomfortable sensation, like like something I don't like about it or something I feel ashamed or... But it's not about the situation, it's just... Um, I, I think it's just trying to attract the attention of the mind, but uh, it happens repeatedly, so it, it's just uh, something that I don't understand properly. And uh, leave it as it is. As far as no, there are no new impingements from the senses, uh, the library shots are coming out. What is inside the mind, what is in the deep down, that is called your childhood's memory, and sometimes neutral, sometimes torturing. And more you, more, the, more that comes, more you heal, like counseling, like free association. So whenever there are no new inputs, uh when the, the mind is calm and quiet all the what is in your stores uh or basement is just just uh, rectify just come out it appear like not related to you but don't suppress them let them re- rectify let them evaporate and you can understand more you let them go more your stores become lighter and lighter and lighter that is what we do not of course myself in counseling let the other person talk freely that is called free association then all things are coming out not in the first day not in the second day third fourth fifth day due to the confidence the hidden things directed dispositions and the hidden this thing going to come out otherwise we have to take them to the next life we are sleeping with this bloody muck and tomorrow morning also getting up with that the same shit but if they are going to rectify going to evaporate I, um, of course they are very bad smelling uh, most of the childhood and the past life bad memories sometimes may be good thing also so they have don't suppress them and it's a by product of your uh, relaxed mind but you never expect it never happened to your expectation they are not happening at your expected rate they happen whenever the situation happen there are no new impingements happens then they start to come out they are you can understand who am i otherwise you don't know so therefore when we are when we are doing question and answer session we are associating each other or when you are mindful and go to the very deep relaxation all these things are going to uh, rectify going to froth out frothing out happens and so much so you get healed and that is i think the best uh, compassionate thing we can do it to ourselves or we can do if possible to others also so once you clean up yourself uh, you will be a will be mediator you can help others also to let them come out otherwise they are hiding it the buddha's dispensation is to expose them more and more exposed uh, you have paid off your old debts and you become a neutral person happy to be or you are happy to keep that to your backlog in your back of your mind 
Yes, Bante, actually perfect. That's how I perceived it also, that they are kind of evaporating or like dissolving in my mind, because at the beginning of my practice, it was mostly very emotional memories. But with the time, they never come back again, these very strong, strong emotions. It's like I almost don't remember what really happened. But now these very indistinct, unimportant memories come. But there is this, uh, yes, unease or whatever connected to them. And that was my also idea of what is going on. So thank you. And also just the last point I wanted to mention is also that the body is uh, being relaxed more and more deeply at the very, very subtle levels. They are just like somewhere very deep inside the body, some tensions, but sometimes it's uh, uh, on the surface. Like yesterday, it was very clear on the skull, like on the top of the skull and in the ears or the teeth. And, uh, and they are very tiny uh, or very slight uh, uh, tensions being released, but uh, I feel a very deep sense of uh, relief. So it's very f like, even though it's a very small thing, but I feel a big deal of relief coming from, from that. So that's the, uh, I, uh, yes. And a la very last point I wanted to make that even though I'm not doing meta practice right now, but yesterday, then suddenly also I had this, just a flash of memory for my boss. And actually, I felt a really sincere compassion that I had a feeling that he's suffering. And uh, it, it surprised me a lot. Um, and even then, I started to feel a bit ashamed or that maybe I was wrong doing to him also, that it was kind of this fight. Uh, but then there was a big... Uh, happiness or jo rejoicing that in such a short time I could actually change my um, angry feelings toward him into compassionate feelings. So that was, I just wanted to share. It was very nice uh, experience. So thank you. The Buddha says when the mind is relaxing, the body is witnessing. Each and every cell, each and every chromosome, each and every particle of the life start feel light and lighter so that is the best compassion you can do it to yourself then start radiating that is called good vibration so whenever you are meditating uh, you are doing something good for the rest of the people rest of the pe uh, human beings and the dead uh, live lively and uh, not living things so therefore each and every thought moment of mindfulness is a universal character you experience it, of course, at the quite latter part of your meditation, but right from the beginning of your mindfulness, it has a healing power. That's why the Buddha says that is the one and the only way for the purification of beings. So, Claudia is going mad. No problem, but we are very sorry. No background music, no background noise now. Thank you. Yes, no, no, but I'm not going mad. I'm going happy. Yeah, yeah. You're crazy I happy. know, so I know how to, how to send people mad. I am master. <laughs> thank you. Ah, I'm, I'm muted. Uh, um, I was saying that Samantha raised her hand. Uh, so, Samantha, now is your turn. Thank, thank you, Jan, and thank you, Bante. Um, I, I just wanted to uh, ask two questions. One thing actually popped up from the previous question from Claudia. Um, that the first question is: um, as one, as you meditate, um, and if you keep using the breath as the primary object, and keep using that all the time. Um, I find that is, does it become a, an autumn um, that uh, that becomes an automatic process. Like uh, when you sit down to meditate, the breath just keeps naturally coming um, anchors to the mind. And um, and it's a case of just now just sitting back and just watching the process. Um, and, and it becomes like habitual. Um, it's like reprogramming a computer. Um, um and then your mind is being reprogrammed and 
it just keeps automatically coming back to you. Um, because sometimes, you know, in other scenarios, if you were trying to sort of like watch sensations or um, other different type of object, it might be a bit difficult to be aware of a different object, but the breath just keeps propping up. Um, um, so it becomes like an automatic process. Um, soon as you just sit down to meditate, it becomes conditioning. Um, and secondly, um, about the metta practice, um, uh, the, the, if I were to sort of practice the metta meditation as you know the normal way, may I be happy to myself, uh, uh, be um, happiness myself, may I be free from suffering and others and another person and the um, the fourth person that the not so um one one you have not so you know affection towards um it doesn't mean much it just means like an automatic process so but it, it's interesting Bhante said uh, the last question that it become uh it, whether this the metta would form automatically through the mindfulness eventually gradually it'll grow as one becomes mindful uh, would that be the case then one become more affectionate and compassion eventually do they go hand in hand basically uh, um that's we, what I, my question about we it. have we have something what is called mindful school we are teaching mindfulness to the whole sri lankan community 0.45 million children so we are progressing at a rate and why it is same thing happening in uk also you can uk parliament also they practice uh, mindfulness before the this thing and they are called mindful nation and after a while they have found that even if someone is mindful they are self concerned they are not concerned about the others no empathy no comp- uh, sympathy and they have written an article uh, together with mindfulness we must teach uh, kindfulness or karuna or compassion and uh, that uh, the person who has written the article has sent the sent a copy to bikubodi and bikubodi sent it to me telling that my dear you if you are not introducing mindfulness to get with uh, compassion please consider read this article so i told bante we are doing random act of kindness we are doing uh, self love sitting very comfortably and kind of thing but i did this research and then uh, we found a particular discourse by the buddha uh, sati sampajanya sutta is called mindfulness and clear comprehension so if you wish to have emotional literacy if you wish to have uh, healthy fear and the healthy uh, moral shame and the moral fear not the compassion matter comprehension is the matter clear comprehension sati must go with sampajanya rather than with compassion because when sati sampajanya is happening compassion is an outcome so now we are we are selecting this as the uh, future of our uh, mindful school uh, that uh, teacher must be my kindful but not teaching kindfulness as a lesson let the the, uh, the children to understand through the teachers behavior but teaching mindfulness and the clear comprehension sati sampajanya ultimately child will understand the emotional literacy moral shame and the moral fear so that is very deep thing superficially you can do it no harm but you must be really really mindful and go in deep layers then only your real mindful kindfulness and the compassion and the loving kindness happens so uh, we are now uh, in a in a process how to present this concept to the world are we teaching compassion or are we uh, emphasizing on the mindfulness with the clear comprehension let the person to understand when you are doing mindfulness and the clear comprehension you are naturally a kindful person you are naturally a person with compassion and the, the loving kindness specifically first to you and naturally it is radiating and uh, spreading to the others so therefore my idea is nothing to worry at the beginning of the beginning at the beginner 
compassion and the loving kindness where as you practice one day you will understand you are not harming others you are not distracting others that is what you call real meaning of compassion this is the real compassion of real meaning of loving kindness rather than uh, artificially doing it so we are in the process uh, dealing with this question with the society at large and uh, early part of your uh, question uh, the way you explain continue with like that and then uh, the, it needs kind of a, it needs kind of a momentum when it's happening the, the habituation you have to instead of have a no agenda habituation to the neutral habituation like the breath or walking and as far as you do it it is artificial it is conditioning but whenever you do regularly one day naturally when you sit your attention goes to the breath but not you are doing forced breathing you are not uh, manipulating the breath and one day you will see while walking you are not artificially walking let the body to walk and you just look at it as if someone else let the body to do with body knowledge let the breathing happen to the body knowledge your observation is the only matter so it takes time so that is what the regularity you have to do in a uh, sequential way regular way then only this regularity happen it is like uh, uh, training a piano or a violin or musical instrument uh, even though you are learning different notes when you are playing in a, in an orchestra things are happening rather than you are doing so it is a, it's a matter of it's a matter of uh, natural flow uh, rather than doing something uh, that is the way the great musicians are uh, entertain music mm. yes thank you bunty that's very um helpful and just lastly um just a, uh, a silly question but um to motivate one to actually do meditation daily to get into that rhythm um so that you're not other work and other outside uh, other gen, you know whatever's happening in your life just you, you you make that as an excuse not to have time how can one um uh, de- devote oneself to do meditation daily pra- make it a daily practice so you have, to have a, you have to have a little group little uh um, little uh, association so maybe mm. four five people can get together then you have the duty bounded so i did it in three years uh, weekly one hour talk and one hour sitting and that gave me a chance to associate these people i regularly participated but they told this coming one hour is not the important thing you come regularly but be mindful each and every moment so the buddha attributed to the Uh, association with true people association with noble people is a kind of a, uh, it is a kind of a gift it's a kind of endowment so if you have close by don't look down it and you also must be a true person as a noble person who are the beginners mm. and that make the momentum that make the that make the flow so therefore we are lucky today when compared to the 30 40 years ago now people mm. pay more attention to the mindfulness and we have mindful societies mindful families mindful school and mindful games so if you have any uh, time please visit our uh, mindful school that is we call in singala satipasala then if you yes. type the mm. mindful school, uh, satipasala so much of people contributed and that become a mindful family we consider each of us as a family member mm yes thank you bante um i appreciate your comment um advice thank you bante okay thank you very much um and now tamara uh, can ask a question if if she like <clears throat> uh 
Hello, Tamara, are you there? Tamara, you have raised your hand. Sorry, sorry. Yes. sorry okay, yes. yes, okay. Yes. Sorry. Um, thank you, um, Venerable Bhante, for taking my question. It's, um, uh, I do uh, sitting, when I do sitting meditation practice, I focus on my breath. And um, as I continue uh, focusing on my breath, um, after some time, and I do this, um, like uh, focusing the details of the breathing in breath and out breath. And after some time, the breath disappears. Um, am I correct in thinking after your description yesterday about Vitakka and Vichara, when the breath disappears, um, the Vitakka Vichara is um, kind of like, um, uh, Topped or Vitaka Vichara is no, they are not there any longer, or uh, is it like um, uh, when I come to a, like an emptiness space? Uh, am I correct in thinking that? Or yeah, in uh, the Venerable Mahasi Jayado, he says that Vitaka Vichara is very helpful uh, for mm -hmm. you to get into the first jhana if you are talking about the Samatha method. But if you wish to go to the second jhana, you have to drop Vitaka Vichara then only you can experience the rapture and the happiness. So usage of the Vitakka Vichara at the doorstep of the first jhana and leaving it aside and going to the second jhana is like when you are driving, when to put into the first gear and when to go into the second gear. So you have to step up, go. You make you some uh, Vitakka Vichara in this first jhana and the second jhana uh, Piti and the third jhana Sukha after using you had to throw away so yes. that part is that is the part very difficult to teach you have to understand the maturity when the maturity happens you drop it just like a Saturn V rocket is going by five uh, rocket engines each and every one burning and shedding burning and shedding burning and shedding uh, just to cross the gravitational force so each mm. and every one you, you, after using you shed off so likewise, mm -hmm. you must understand, of course, when you are developing, developing the mastery, you know when to use the Vitakka Vichara and when to drop. So very difficult to teach you. There is no one at your uh, meditation sitting posture. You have to decide what you are telling is correct. Right. Okay. And the other thing is, um, uh, Bhante, um, like Claudia, I also thought that after the yesterday's Dhamma discussion, the, the perception is evolving from the thought. So when you're meditating, um, um, the, if you kind of like um, stop the thought, then the perception disappears. But from today, what you said was perception may still be there even the you get rid of the thought part. Am I correct? Uh, the, when you are when you are analyzing according to the <coughs> Madhubindika Sutta, I think Sutta number ninety five in Madhubindikaaye, uh, Chakkuncha Paticha Rupe Chupaje Chakku Vinjana Tinnan Sangati Paso Paso Pachya Vedana Yang Vedeti Tan Sanjana Ti Yang Sanjana Ti Tang Vitakke Ti. So Sanjana and Vitakke uh, very close two links. And after Sanjana, Vitakka happened. Vitakka is more gross, more manifestating, more restrainable. So, yang Vitakka eti tang vichara eti, o tam papancheti. So, you have to understand Vitakka vichara. And once that is tackled, still you see Sanjana na sadhya. They yes. are more preliminary. They are more primordial. So, you are going backward uh, along the street. So, but in the in uh, Samaditi Sutta, uh, the, there's another sequence also uh, directed and shown by Venerable Sariputta. Uh, so there are some reciprocal relationships. In this particular Sutta, first you have to tackle Vitakka, Kama Vitakka, and then you, have to, you will see once that uh, part is removed, you can see Kama Sanya. Yeah. Uh, and uh, further to that, uh, Bhante, may I ask, um, so when you are meditating, um, uh, it's easy. I mean, you don't think about anything and 
you just focus on your breath and if it goes away uh, with a thought, then you bring back to the uh, breath and it subsides um, and then you come into like a, um, a emptiness and empty space. But once the meditation is over, even if you're mindful and keep your um, attention into your body, uh, it is sometimes difficult to get rid of all these perception level. So as a lay person, is it possible to achieve this um, renunciation? No, that even at the sitting posture, even in meditation, as you mentioned, if it is possible, it's a great achievement. It's a great positive thinking. Being as a lay person or being as a worldly being, I can experience some little bit of renunciation. But I know under certain circumstances that has been completely mixed up and I am not possible but your potential to go back to the renowned situation in the tomorrow or day after is still there possibility is there probability is there potential is there so that is the what we are going to share in the retreat not the 100% perfect renunciation but mm. uh, the, in uh, such an imperfect world there are some beacon lights. Under such circumstances, I can experience it. But when you leave, keep on living, keep on uh, organizing your life, you give more facilitating, you are give more facilities, or facilitating whereby you can experience more and more renounced way of life. Otherwise, other times are due to worldly affairs, you get mixed mm -hmm. up with. So you have to be wise in adjusting your way of life. So it's an open issue. Don't expect 100% perfection here, but you see potential. You have to see the possibilities. That, that itself, that itself is a great achievement. So now it is time up to the close. Uh, yeah, and we are going to have thunderstorms. I've I've heard something in background. That's um thunderstorm coming does it mean we are um finishing the session for today now better to better because we are cutting off our electricity otherwise okay. uh, surge is happening so yes, yes. that if there are more we can start tomorrow